In this lecture, we're going to begin with frequency analysis. Up to this point, we've assumed that amplifiers just have a low frequency gain, but we're going to start looking to see what happens at frequencies above DC. And we're going to start with what we call open circuit time constant analysis. or what I will abbreviate as OCTC. Before we do that, in the general sense, if we have an amplifier that has a gain of A of S, and we're assuming this is a frequency dependent gain now, we're going to say that the amplifier has a, a gain of A of S, which is equal to, of course, A of J omega where omega is our radial frequency. And we can rewrite this as VO over VI with respect to frequency. Normally, we will write this in decibels. We would look at two specific components, a magnitude response, magnitude of A of J omega, and a phase response, the angle of J omega. And of course, what we would see, for instance, is a DC gain that might have a value of A that when we reached a pole frequency would start to roll off at 20 dBs per decade. If it hit a zero, we would have an increase of 20 dBs per decade, which would flatten the response out. So we're going to say that that first pole was at omega P1. We'd have an omega Z1 for a zero. Finally, we might hit another pole, omega P2, and the roll-off would continue at 20 dBs per decade. So in principle, all you need to remember is that Poles cause a 20 dB per decade roll-off, and zeros cause a 20 dB per decade increase. For every pole, we should have a total phase shift of 45 degrees at the pole frequency. And far away from the pole frequency, that should go towards 90 degrees, or it should approach 90 degrees of phase shift. For our zeros, we'll get a plus 45 degree phase shift at the pole frequency. And as we get far away from that pole, that zero frequency, we would approach a total phase shift of plus 90 degrees. So if we looked at our phase response for the system above, we might see something that looks like what we just plotted. I should mention that we're plotting this in terms of log of omega. So in general, we can write our amplifier gain as a function of frequency. where we might have our total amplifier gain, A of S, is equal to A sub M, which is our mid-band gain, times a couple of frequency shaping factors, F H of S, which is a high frequency shaping factor, times FL of S, and this will be a low frequency shaping factor. So if we were to plot a frequency response, and we'll just look at the magnitude response right now, we might see a frequency response in terms of log of omega 
it looks something like so. We would have roll off at low frequencies, we'd have a flat mid-band gain, and we'd have roll off at high frequencies. So this roll off would stop at a frequency omega L and would continue again at a frequency of omega H. So this would be our mid-band gain. And at low frequencies, this would be the low frequency shaping factor, FL of S. At high frequencies, this would be the high frequency shaping factor, FH of S. And we would find these two shaping factors using, for FL of S, we would use a short circuit time constant method, or SCTC. We'll look at that in the next lecture. But what we're going to focus on today for the high frequency is our OCT analysis, open circuit time constant. So what we would assume is that we would have FH of S, our shaping function, might be a polynomial in the numerator and denominator, 1 plus A1 of S plus A2 of S squared plus AZ of S to the Z in the numerator, so all of our z's would be in, all of our zeros would be in the numerator, and we would have poles in the denominator, 1 plus b1 of s plus b2 of s squared plus up to bp of s to the p. And we're going to assume that the number of poles is greater than the number of zeros, which would cause a roll-off at high frequencies. Now, what we're going to do is assume that we can sum all of our pole frequencies, or all of our time constants up in a given circuit, sum from i equals 1 to the number of poles of our time constant, tau p sub i, where tau p sub i is an individual time constant. And of course, this is equal to sum from i equals 1 to p of 1 divided by omega p sub i, where omega p sub i is equal to 1 divided by tau p sub i. And we should note that any of our tau p sub i's are equal to some capacitance times some resistance, where our capacitances, C sub i's, come from our devices. So for instance, for our bipolar devices, we might see C mu's, C pi's. For our MOS devices, we might see C G D's, C G S's, C drain to bulks, C D B's, and so on and maybe even from external components. And our R sub i's come from the device and external resistances. So they come from devices and external resistances. So R sub zeros, R sub pi's, external resistors. Etc. And our R sub i's are the total resistance seen by a given capacitor. In other words, when we start looking at the frequency response, basically what we're going to do is find the small signal capacitors in our devices and figure out how long it would take to charge those devices up through the given resistors that are tied to them. And we will start to look at that investigation in the next part of the lecture.